Quite a busy day here on the Market Day Report. I'm John Jenkinson. Uh, weekly export sales were out this morning, and we did have some more sales also this morning. Let's run down the numbers over on the board right now and bring you up to date as most of the grains are trending higher. Um, we'll start with corn this morning, where we're actually uh, estimates were anywhere from 650 to 1.25 million. We came in right at 1.12, uh, almost to the top of that range of uh, the uh, estimates. Soybeans, uh, good sales here. Soybean meal, the soybean oil a little lackluster. The wheat came in a little lackluster as well. 375.5. The lower end of those estimates was 350. The higher end was 550, so as you can see, not, not a big deal there, but let's get analysis on all of this, plus more with Jim McCormick with Allendale at McHenry, Illinois. Good morning, Jim. The export sales numbers are in, but before we went on the air, you and I were talking that uh, this is really becoming a weather market now. Yeah, right now, like I said, the exports were definitely good, um, and that gave us a little bit of a boost here early in the morning. But I think once those numbers came out, the trade's attention's really shifting back to this hurricane. It looks like it's going to be a lot of devastation. We know South Florida's going to get hit, but as we, from between last night and this morning, the, the shift of the track of it's kind of moved a little bit further west, and now we've got some exposure. Uh, it's going to push its way north into Georgia and all the way into the Tennessee River Valley, and you got roughly about 14% of the Georgia, of the U.S. cotton production it sits in Georgia, about 2.9 million barrels of cotton. On the corn side of the equation, roughly about 440 million bushels of corn, or roughly about 3% of production, is we, we calculate in the path of this Irma. So some of this corn, it's you know, it's right there on the cusp of being harvested, and you throw, you know, 90, 100 mile an hour winds at it, you have a really good chance of uh, knocking that corn down and taking out some pretty good corn, because some, if you look back, some of the best corn we have growing this year happens to be the part of the country that's going to get hit with these huge uh, rains and wind. What about soybeans, Jim? Because when we were talking about the drought in the Midwest, um, some analysts were saying, well, we'll be able to lean on a good portion of those soybeans in the southeastern part of the United States to maybe fill that gap. Um, they're actually going to be impacted also. Right now, I mean, it's going to go through Georgia. Georgia's not a huge producer of beans, about 7 million bushels of beans. But Tennessee, they produce about 77 million bushels of beans. Kentucky's about 98 million bushels of beans. Alabama, about 20 million. Um, so they do add up. You know, that adds up. You lose 100, you know, we take out 50 million bushels of production just due to that. That becomes a problem. Now, one thing, a little bit of a boost that might help, some of this far southern Illinois, southern Indiana beans, where they may not get the heavy, the, the immense heavy rains, but decent rains, that might actually help some of the late double crop beans down there because uh, they're, I got customers down there saying they really do need some rain. They actually have corn dying early on the plant because of their lack of rain, and that's going to cause a problem in the long run. They're, they're, got, they're preparing to have to dry this corn down. Uh, I had one customer putting in a propane take in today, just fearful of it's going to be a wet harvest this year. Well, the other thing we have to consider, too, is even if the hurricane does go on its current projected track, there's still going to be residual rains that are going to slow harvest and kind of cause a hiccup in some of these other areas. And that's not if this hurricane does make a little bit of more of a left turn. Yeah, I mean, it will. I mean, plain and simple is, you know, these areas are trying to get going harvest, and, you know, you've got beans ready to be harvested. You want to get them out of the field as quick as you can. You get rain on them, they pop out of the out of the pods, and it just, you know, it's production loss, and uh, that just hurts the producers who are on the cusp of a record crop in parts of this, you know, the southeast. All very good points. Jim McCormick here with Allendale Incorporated, McHenry, Illinois. Uh, don't go anywhere. We need to get to the livestock trade. We're going to talk about that with Jim in just a moment. More of the Market Day Report coming up. Jim McCormick with Allendale here with us to analyze the markets. Uh, before we went to the break, uh, I wanted, wanted to have a little bit of time to talk about the dollar. It has just really been thrashed here lately. And uh, does that also help with a lot of these exports? And, and what's, that, what's that spell for the grain market? Well, what it does is... Um, John, is it, the cheaper dollar just makes us more competitive on the world market. There is a lot of competition right now for grains and meats around the world. As the dollar breaks, um, that brings buyers into the United States. So uh, the weaker dollar is really um, should stimulate the market in the long run. I believe this weaker dollar is what's going to turn the commodity market around. As you know, the cheaper the dollar gets, the more uh, people tend to buy commodities. A classic example as we get into the livestock, um, we sold roughly about 239 million pounds of beef. Uh, exports out in the month of July. A year ago, 
It was only 217 roughly. So you can see the dollar's been trending lower, and what do you know? We saw a whole heck of a lot more beef. Well, and I, you, we've been talking about this, this protein market needing a little bit of a shot in the arm. That could certainly help, although I don't think we can completely rely on that, right? No, you can't completely rely on it. I mean, we've got a lot of trade deals right now. I mean, the the, the, the meat market, the protein market is a little bit leery. Um, over the weekend, this past weekend, President Trump was talking about maybe removing us from the Korean trade deal. We sell a lot of protein to the to Korea. Um, so you got to be cautious about that. China just started coming in and buying U.S. beef for the first time in multiple years. So, um, you know, that's probably going to have the overarching theme affecting the export market near term. But the cheap Per dollar is just something, it's in the back burner that, you know, it should help us in the long run. Right now we've got asking prices for cash cattle, 102 to 103 in the south, and in that uh, 163 range for uh, for bids in the north, or I, sh I should say those raw bid prices. Still haven't seen any cash cattle trade. Uh, it, we may come down to the last blink. We might. I mean, it's not. There's been a few weeks, and off and on, we don't trade cattle, and you almost get the pain. This may be one of those weeks that we don't trade cattle. If we do, it probably will be after the market closes, buzz. Because right now, the Packers seem like they've got they've got the formula cattle coming at them. They've got some contract cattle coming at them, and they just they see a lot of cattle coming at us near term, and that's keeping the October under pressure. And you know, right now it's just kind of a standoff. The board rally that's got the producers wanting a little bit more money. There is money to pay up, but right now the Packers, you know, with these formulated cattle coming out, they're not paying up, and uh, now it'll be who blinks first at this point. Yeah, you're right. Jim McCormick with Allendale Incorporated, McHenry, Illinois. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thank you for having me on. All right, let's run through the futures here right quick before we go to the break, and uh, we'll start with the, uh, oh, let's start over here in the uh, live cattle futures where we're down two cents nearby, 106.20, but the December live cattle up 28 at 111.40. Feeder cattle this morning, October feeders up 77, 146.92. November feeder cattle up 53, 146.45. To the hog market we go. It's December hogs up 7, 58.35. February hogs up 17 at 63.45. Remember, this market really struggled a little bit yesterday. April hogs right now up 20 at 68.35. We go all the way out to May. We're unchanged right now and at the high 73.90, but of course that's quite a way is out. We'll have to watch that and see if we're going to fall back on weakness. I was talking to one uh, analyst earlier that said we might be able to underpin part of this market right now just for the simple fact that maybe it has uh, taken it all the way down to some, some pretty good support levels in that 60 to 61 range. and We might be able to hold in that area here going forward. So we'll keep a sharp eye on that yeah. throughout this afternoon as well as that weather forecast. That's going to play a big part in all of this agriculture activity. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Markets Editor John Jenkinson.